worship. We worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. Cause he opened the prison doors. He conquered the raging sea. My God, he holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Shout out your praise, there's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place, and we won't be quiet. Well, shout out your praise. Shout out your praise. Oh, come on, give a shout of praise this morning. He is worthy. Hallelujah. Because we were the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running. Redeemed by his grace, let the house of the Lord sing praise. Come on, sing it. We were the beggars, now we're royalty. We were, we were the prisoners, now we're running. Now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by his grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Quiet. Well, shout out your praise. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. Well, shout out. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. Well, shout out your praise. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Oh, we shout out your praise. Oh, come on, testify again. We were the beggars. Come on, sing it. Now we're royalty. We were the prisoners. Now we're running. Now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by his grace. Let the house of the Lord sing Oh, if you believe that this morning, shout it out.
Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand when everything around is shaken. And I've never been more glad because I put my faith in Jesus.
I know the experts say that you can't be helped. I know the world says that you cannot change. But let me tell you, they told me that over 27 years ago when I was locked up. And they said, hey, you'll always be a save. You'll always be a drug addict. And then I met the Lord. Oh, come on. Give the God praise this morning. What is impossible for man. Come on, somebody. God is good. Amen. God is good this morning. Amen. And we want to just thank everybody for being here this morning. On behalf of our pastor, Pastor Mitchell and Sister Nelly, we want to welcome you. Let you know that you are in the right place. And then you also there at home, you are in the right place. And God's going to minister you today. Amen. This morning, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and let you get out of your seats this morning. Let's greet one another in the Lord. Let's greet somebody new today in God's house. morning as I was uh, praying, God was reminding me of what I had just shared with you, that over 27 years ago, there was a police officer that told me, there's no hope for you. There's no change. You can't change. Once a drug addict, always a drug addict. But God set me free in 1997, and I've never had to go back. So I don't know if you come today discouraged, but let me tell you that. There is hope in Jesus. Amen. If we can have the usherettes take their place this morning, we're going to get ready to pay our tithes and give up our offerings. You can scan the QR code or you can raise your hand. They have an envelope ready for you to give. Amen. You can text to give and you can give online. And the Bible reads in Isaiah 32, 8, it says, But the generous plan to do what is generous, and they stand firm in their generosity. In other words, generous people don't stress. We don't worry. You know what they do? They continue to trust in God. And they give to God what belongs to God. They continue to sow generously. They continue to pay their tithes and give to God of his treasure. Amen. They continue to give of their talent. They continue to give of their treasure, their talent. Amen. So what am I saying this morning, church? I want to encourage you to give God what belongs to God. Give God what belongs to God. The Bible reads in Proverbs eleven twenty five: the generous will prosper, that those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. So you can never outgive God. Come on, somebody. I said you can never outgive God. I want to say it because I think some of you guys are still asleep. I said you can never outgive God. And this morning, your tithe is 10% of your income. Anything above that is an offering unto the Lord. Amen. Are we ready to give this morning in the house of the Lord? Are we ready to give in the house of the Lord? All right. Let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning, God. We pray that you bless your people, God. Lord, bless their seed that they are sowing into your kingdom, God. We know that the seed will not return void in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you for your giving this morning. 
Amen. As the baskets are being passed, I have a few announcements for us this morning, and these are things that you want to mark down, you want to jot in your calendar, because how many of us want to be a part? Amen. Um, starting with tonight, I don't know if you guys know, but this weekend or this past couple of days has been fire encounter. And I've heard some powerful things that have taken place, and you don't want to miss out. It's going to be the last night tonight, and Pastor Augie Barajas is going to be speaking. And then also for all the women out there, we're going to be having a women's discipleship. It's going to show up on the screens right now, Better When Broken. That's going to be April 12th at 7.30. It's going to be here at our church, so you don't have to go too far. But we're going to be having a skit. There's going to be a fun time and then just some quality time with some women of God. Because how many of us women, we need that sometimes. We need just the women around. We don't need the men. But I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. We do need the guys, but not all the time. <laughs> and then also... Um, for all the newcomers, we're going to be having a meet and greet right after service, as well as a next step class for the newcomers starting next week, August 14th, and it's going to continue for August 20, or August, sorry, April, April 14th, April 21st, and April 28th, so you don't want to miss out on that if you want to grow, if you have questions, if you want to learn more, that's all for the newcomers, amen. And then also for our multi-regional on April 28th, that's going to be at 6 p.m. in Chino with Pastor Sonny Jr. And then lastly, um, for all the, all the ages, people from ages 12 through 28, we're going to be starting Third Wave Sundays today. That's going to be every Sunday. So if you're in here and you're in between the ages of 12 and 28, you can make your way to the foyer next to the kitchen over there in that other building. Um, but we're going to be having a video announcement if we could pay attention to the screens. Just kidding. We're not having a video announcement. <laughs> we are having an announcement for the Mighty Men of Valor. Um, that's April 20, early bird special at April 26th. Um, that's in April next week or next month, this month, sorry, this month. Um, it's going to be in Ontario Convention Center. So if you have questions, you can ask the men up here. If you want to register, register now. You don't want to miss out. That's a powerful event for the men if you are desiring more of God in your life. But if we could all stand for some worship. There's nothing worth more. That could ever come close Nothing can compare You're our living hope Your presence, Lord I'll taste it and see I'll taste it and see the sweetest of love when my heart becomes free and my shame is enough your presence oh. Holy Spirit Holy Spirit you are Oh! 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's give Jesus a good praise offering here this morning. I said, let's give Jesus a good praise offering here this morning. He's the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. He's the Almighty. Amen. He's the Redeemer. He's our Savior. Praise the Lord. There we go. That's a little bit better. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated here this morning. Thank you, worship team. But before I get started, uh, we have a bit of some business to take care of. How many love the men's home? Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, we're going to be shooting one of our arrows. Amen. And as Brother Josue begins to make his, his way up here, what we're going to be doing, and Brother Peter, if he can make his way up here, what we're going to be doing is this young man has, he's graduated from our home, and now he feels the calling to go out to the UTC, so we're going to be sending them there to Guadalajara, Jalisco. Amen. But Brother Peter's going to explain a little bit more about what that is, and then he's going to go ahead and, and pray for Brother Josue. Amen, church. Well, for those of you that do not know what the Urban Training Center is, it's basically a, it's a training center that we send out anybody within the age of 18 to 35 to be able to help go and build their character, be able to help build their leadership, to expose them to different areas of ministry and to be able to help show them that they are called for the ministry of serving God, not only here but in all across the world. Amen. We have training centers in Brazil, Panama, and in this case we're going to be sending Josue to Guadalajara. Amen. So just keep them in prayer. Because in this season, he's going to be separating himself to be able to go and get a hold of God and to get equipped and to come back and become an asset for our church. Amen. So uh, I believe at this time we want to ask a few of our leaders to come up and we're going to, we're going to pray for uh, Brother Josue in this time. Uh, why don't we all bow our heads this morning. Uh, Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you this morning, Father God. Lord, we come before you, God. Lord, we ask, God, in the name of Jesus, God, that, Lord, we lift up whole sway, God. And in this season of separation, God, that, Father, you go before him, God. That, Lord, you level the mountains, God. That, Lord, in this season of separation, God, that, Lord, you ignite a fire of the Holy Spirit within him, God. Lord, we pray for protection, God, in his travels, God. Father, we pray that, God, Lord, you begin to prepare his mind, prepare his heart, Lord, prepare his spirit, God, for the work that you are going to do within him, God. Lord, we pray for revelation, God. That, Lord, you begin to show your plans, God. Show him the purpose you have called him for, God. Lord, we pray right now in the name of Jesus, God, for your Holy Spirit, God, to come upon him, God, in this season, God. Lord, we worship you and we praise you. We lift him up in the name of Jesus. In, in Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Be, before he goes, before he goes, before he goes, how many want to hear a, test, a quick testimony? Amen. Uh, first off, I want to thank God for my salvation. Um, man, he put me on, on his rock, on his spirit. And bef before I was walking with Christ, I used to be a drug addict. And I used to do a lot of fentanyl. I had no purpose. I had no meaning. I had no value. I had no vision. You know, and but... I'm here to testify that God can, That's right. yeah. that God can feel that in your life. If he could do it for me, he could do it for you. And I just want to give God praise because God is taking me farther. You know, God is, God is doing something in my life where, where I can't even, I don't even know how to say it right now. But I thank God that, he, that he's just doing what he has to do. And I'm saying yes and amen. God, take me where you want me to go, God, and let me, do, let me be what you want me to be, God. And I just want to give thanks to God and, and thank uh, my pastors and my leaders. You know, I look up to you guys. I listen. I, I, you know, thank you, Brother Abel. Brother Abel has been so cool. He's been so awesome. He's a great, wise guy, I can say. I listen to him. So I, I didn't listen before, but now I do, and I thank God. Amen. Thank you, Brother John, and thank the church. I appreciate you guys. I love you guys, and I'll pray for you guys. Thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. I know we didn't mention it, but he's going to be gone for six months. There is a, 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 it's a round trip, right? So he's coming back. He's, he, he's not going to get caught up in the Internet. He's coming back. Remember that, coming back. Amen. Take your Bibles with me here this morning 
and turn them to the book of Psalms, chapter 107. Psalms, chapter 107. And I'm going to be reading verse number 2, and then we'll go ahead and kind of take off from there. The Word of God says this. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. Those he redeemed from the hand of the foe. Father, we thank you, God, here this morning for just this moment that you have given each and every one of us to be here to gather around your word. Father, I pray, prepare the soil of our hearts and our minds and our spirits here this morning. Let us receive what you have for each and every one of us. God, help me to communicate your word with simplicity and clarity. Remove me, God, this morning. Increase. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. For those of you that know, sometimes preachers can get a little weird, right? And we can get a little weird when we know that that we're going to be preaching, that it's going to be our turn to, to get behind the pulpit and to be able to share God's word. And what I mean by sometimes we can get a little weird is all of a sudden we start looking for confirmation all over the place. We start seeking God and, and, and we're on high alert and our ears are tuned in and, and we're seeing and we're listening to everything that is being spoken wherever it's at, wherever we go, whatever time of day it is. Whether we're, whether we're listening to the radio or watching TV or talking to somebody, we're always looking to see if we're in the river that God wants us in so that we can be able to speak the word of God. And let me tell you that for the last couple of weeks, I've known. I've known the scripture that, that I was going to use because Pastor Mitchell used it a few weeks ago. He made reference to it. And at that moment, something began to take place inside of my spirit where I knew that I knew that I knew that this is the scripture that I, that I needed to use. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. So from that moment on, I, again, my antennas were up, my radar was up. And all of a sudden, Wednesday night comes along and Skyler gets up here and he starts preaching the word of God. And out of his mouth came out that God was writing your story. Holy Ghost Thursday comes along the home. We go to Holy Ghost Thursday. We gather with other homes. One of the directors is calling testimonies up and he uses... Psalms 107, chapter, verse number 2, to call the testimonies up. He said, let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. Friday night, we go to fire encounter. And on the very first night, the evangelist there that is preaching, not once, but twice, makes mention of let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. So for me, it was clear. It was clear that God wanted to use this. And why this in particular? Last week, Pastor preached the, about the resurrection. And he said that we believe in the resurrection not because we read it in the Bible or because it is written in the Hebrew Scriptures, but he said that we believe it because it was accounted for by eyewitnesses. In other words, they told their story. He also mentioned that Mark's account of the Bible was told to him by Peter. In other words, Peter told his story. So now here we are in this portion of Scripture where God is asking us to tell our story. You see, but this portion of Scripture, it's addressing a very certain 
it's addressing a certain group of people. It wasn't for everybody. It was specifically for a certain group. It was for the redeemed. It was for the people that had gone through some things. It was for the people that had experienced ups and downs, for people that had experienced bondage, for people that had experienced troubles, trials, tribulations, for people that one day called on the name of the Lord and God came through and redeemed them from their situation. And he's calling them to tell their story so that they can declare that they have been redeemed. The psalmist here is writing to the nation of Israel who had just returned from their exile in Babylon. How many know the people were free, but at one point they had turned away from God. And when they turned away from God, the Babylonian army came in and they took the people captive. They were taken into 70 years of captivity after turning away from God. Israel was punished by being invaded by the Babylonians. And during her captivity, Israel had dreamed about the day that she would return to Jerusalem and to the promised land. Israel had visions of reestablishing her former prominence, rebuilding not only the city of Jerusalem, but also the temple and restoring both of them back to their, their original splendor. This particular psalm speaks on four different situations that the people were redeemed from. In other words, it's speaking to a group of people that have been through some things and have been rescued. How many here this morning have been through some things? How many here this morning have encountered challenges? How many here this morning have encountered trials and tribulations? I think each and every one of us could identify with that. And God has done so much. He, has, he did so much for the people then. And he has done so much for you and I. God has redeemed us. Redeemed, to be a, it means to be avenged, to be saved from danger or hostility. It's to be purchased. How many have redeemed points before? Right? We've redeemed, we redeem coupons, we redeem points, we redeem miles, we redeem... And in the process of redemption, in the process of redeeming, there's always an exchange that takes place. Here, a kinsman redeemer purchases a relative from slavery. A kinsman avenger provides justice on behalf of a relative. And both concepts are in the image of God as being the redeemer. God has redeemed us from being lost. According to verses 4 through 9, the Bible says that some wandered in desert wastelands, finding no way to a city where they could settle. They were hungry and thirsty, and their lives ebbed away. Actually, 4 and 5, verse 4 and 5. The people wandered in wastelands. And this group of people who at one point were lost and had no sense of direction, they wandered in the wastelands. Uh, the wastelands is a place that is empty, a place that is desolate, a place with no sign of life or no growth, an, un, un, an uninhabited wilderness that is worthless for cultivation. This is where the people wandered, desert wastelands. Oftentimes have extreme and harsh temperatures, which make living conditions very difficult or nearly impossible, if not impossible. And this is symbolic of the life that was being lived without Jesus Christ. 
before Jesus Christ, if we were lost. We were looking for satisfaction and could not be satisfied. We were looking for fulfillment and could not be fulfilled. We were looking for real love but could not find it. Why not? Because we were looking in all the wrong places. We were wandering in the desert wasteland. We were wandering in a place that was empty. We were wandering in a place that was desolate. We were wandering in a place with no sign and no life or growth. So we were left hungry and thirsty, like the scripture says, and our lives slowly fading away. But the beautiful thing is this, that the children of Israel might have found themselves in this condition, but in verses 6 and 7, they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way to a city where they could settle. And it's much like you and I. We found ourselves in the same condition at one point or another. We were living our lives on empty. We were living our lives desolate. We were living our lives with no sign of life or growth. But one day, we called on the name of the Redeemer. There was an exchange that took place for our lives. We called on the one who made a transaction for you and for me. We called on the one who paid a price for us. Our Redeemer. We called on the name of Jesus Christ. He heard our cry. That's our Redeemer. And he has come into our lives. And now God has changed our story. He has changed your story. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. Isaiah 43, 18 through 19 says this. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. God is doing something new. There in Isaiah, the people were looking for God to move the same way. They had been delivered once before. God had rescued them once before. By his mighty hand, his miraculous hand, he took them out of the bondage that they were in. And the people were looking for God to move the same way again. So here Isaiah showed up. And he said, I am doing something new. Why? Because God was getting ready to move in a new way, in a new dimension, in a fresh way. Because the deliverance that they were looking for was not the deliverance that they were going to receive. But Jesus Christ was going to come to redeem their lives, to set them free. Because he who the Son says free is free indeed. God has redeemed us. From being lost. Psalms 107 verse 8. Says let them give thanks to the Lord. For his unfailing love. And his wonderful deeds for mankind. For he satisfies the thirsty. And fills the hungry. With good things. Even though they were lost. Even though at one point. We were lost. When we called on the name of Jesus Christ, he came into our lives. And today I can tell you that we are no longer lost because Jesus is the way, Jesus is the truth, and Jesus is the life. According to John chapter 14 verse 6, we are no longer left hungry because Jesus is the bread of life. According to John 6 35, and today he satisfies our hunger. We are no longer left thirsty. Because Jesus is the living water, according to John chapter 4, verses 10 through 14. And he satisfies our thirst. Not only did God redeem us from being lost, he also redeemed us from being guilty. 
Verse number 10 in Psalms chapter 107 says this, that some sat in darkness, in utter darkness, prisoners suffering in iron chains because they rebelled against God's commands and despised the plans of the Most High. So he, so he subjected them to bitter labor. They stumbled and there was no one to help. This speaks to a people who were guilty from, for turning away from God. The Bible says that they rebelled against God's commands, that they despised the plans of the Most High. In other words, they chose not to be obedient to his plans and his purposes. The prophet Jeremiah began to even warn them. He began to tell them to, to turn their hearts back to God. He told them, actually, this is what he told them. He said, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says, Reform your ways and your actions, and I will let you live in this place. Do not trust in deceptive words and say, this is the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. If you really change your ways and your actions and deal with each other justly, if you do not oppress the foreigner, the fatherless, or the widow, and do not shed innocent blood in this place, and if you do not follow other gods to your own harm, then I will let you live in this place in the land I gave your ancestors forever and ever. And even after the prophet Jeremiah warned them, they still did not listen. So God allowed them to be invaded. God allowed them to be taken into captivity. And he subjected them to that bitter labor where they stumbled and there was no one to help. This is a clear picture of a life that is not following God. Or it's a clear picture of one who at one point had a relationship with God, but for some reason or, or another turned away. You see... The children of Israel, they knew exactly what God wanted them to do. They knew. And even though they knew, they wouldn't do it, so they were taken captive. And in their captivity, they began to cry out to God. In verse 13, it shows that they, said, that they cried out to the Lord in their trouble. And once again, he saved them from their distress. You see, it didn't matter to God if they had been guilty of not following him. It didn't matter to God if they had turned from him. It didn't matter to God the mistakes that they had committed. The moment that they turned their hearts back to God and cried out for him, he, sa he stepped in and he saved them from their distress. And this morning, I want to encourage us here this, this morning that if we've turned away, that, that we could turn our hearts back to him and begin to cry out, God, we need you, God, I need to come back. And our redeeming God is willing and ready to step in and take us in once again. He wants to change our story. Ephesians 1 7 says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace. Galatians 3 13 says, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hung on a pole. Isaiah 44, 22 says, I have swept away your offenses like a cloud, your sins like the morning mist. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. You see, we have a loving and graceful Father in heaven that when we turn to him, when we come back to him, he redeems us, he accepts us, he embraces us, and he takes our sins 
and he sweeps them away. In verse 14 of the same chapter, 107, the word of God says that he brought them out of darkness, the utter darkness, and he broke away their chains. The moment that they turned to him, the Redeemer stepped in. The moment that they turned to him, the Redeemer brought light into their situation. The moment that they turned to him, the Redeemer broke the chains of bondage from within their lives. The moment that they turned to him, the Redeemer erased their guilt. The moment that they turned to him, the Redeemer set them free. This morning, I'm here to let us know that we can turn to God and he will shine a light in our situation. He will break the chains of bondage from within our lives. He will erase our guilt and set us free. The Redeemer, let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. Not only did God redeem us from being lost, not only did God redeem us from being guilty, but God also redeemed us from being sick. Verse number 17, it's all in the same chapter. The word of God says, some became fools through their rebellious ways and suffered affliction because of their iniquities. This speaks to a people that because of their own rebellious ways, they found themselves suffering from affliction and even drew near to death. See, but sometimes it's not even a thing that we do. Sometimes we just get hit. And sickness just comes. And affliction just comes. Sometimes it is ourselves and our decisions. I know that for me, it was my own doing. For me, it was my addiction to the drugs that almost made me lose my mind. But at other times, like I mentioned, it's not our fault. It can be because of past experiences, past wounds, past pains that we battle with anxieties or that we battle with depression or that we battle with insecurities. It can be because of past experiences that we can suffer from mental, emotional, physical, or even spiritual wounds. But the psalmist here gives us hope. He says that, that they cried out to the Lord in their trouble and he saved them from their distress. He sent out his word and he healed them. He rescued them from the grave. This morning there is healing for you and for me. This morning the Redeemer is here in this place and he wants to heal you from anxieties and insecurities. This morning he wants to heal you from depression and mental and emotional and physical and spiritual wounds. This morning, he wants to redeem his people. At this particular time in the history of Israel, it didn't even look like it was possible. It looked like it was a dead situation. But this morning, I want us to understand that what's impossible for man is possible with God. God has the ability, God has the ability to breathe life into a dead situation. He has the ability to heal. He has the ability to do the impossible. Isaiah chapter 53 verses 4 and 5 says, Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds, we are healed. Isaiah 57, 18 and 19, I have seen their ways, but I will heal them. It doesn't matter what they've done. It doesn't matter their mistakes. It doesn't, as soon as they call upon my name, I will heal them. I will guide them, and I will restore their comfort to Israel's mourners, creating praise on their lips 
this morning. God is changing your story. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. Psalms 103, verse 2, and five, verse 2 through 5, Praise the Lord my soul, and forget not all of his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Psalm 107, verses 19 through 22 say, Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. Let them sacrifice thank offerings and tell of his works with songs of joy. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. You have a story. I have a story. We all have a story. We've all been through some things. We have been redeemed from being lost. We have been redeemed from being guilty. We have been redeemed from being sick. And now we can be redeemed from being storm tossed. Verse 23, same chapter. Some went out on the sea ships. They were merchants on the mighty waters. They saw the works of the Lord, his wonderful deeds in the deep. For he spoke and stirred up a tempest that lifted high waves. They mounted up to the heavens and went down to the depths. In their peril, their courage melted away. They reeled and staggered like drunkards. They were at their wit's end. I would venture to say that when they started their journey on the ships, that the seas were calm. Probably smooth sailing at first. We've all experienced that too, right? But here the Bible records in verse 25 that he spoke and he stirred up a tempest. A violent, windy storm came in and it lifted the waves. And I'm sure that the people were not looking for the winds. I'm sure that the people were not expecting the winds. These winds came out of nowhere and they made the high, the high waves start crashing against the boat. The high waves started crashing against the ship. But here is where the issues of life sometimes, they just hit. We don't expect them. We're not looking for them. But the winds start blowing. We don't know where they're coming from. We don't know where they're going. But the storm begins to rage and the waters begin to rage. And the waters begin to hit our boat and they begin to hit our ship. And it begins to toss us to and fro. And we begin to kind of look like we're drunkards like it's showed there in scripture. But you know what the beautiful thing is? Is that we're not alone. This story reminded me of what Pastor Rick Alaniz preached about yesterday as he preached on Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41, where Jesus and the disciples got into the boat and he told them, let's go on over to the other side. On their journey to the other side, the same thing happened. Out of nowhere, they weren't expecting it. They weren't looking for it. But the winds began to blow and the waters began to get rough and they started crashing upon that boat and the disciples started to get so scared that they even went and they woke Jesus up and they told him, teacher, do you not care? Do you not care that we're going to die? Do you not care that we're going to drown? So Jesus got up, he rebuked the wind and he said to the waves, quiet, be still. The wind stopped blowing. The water settled down. And this morning, I'm here to let you know that Jesus is with you. He's in the boat with you as well. And this morning, you have the authority. You have the power to speak to those winds. You have the power and the authority to speak to those waters and let them know to be still. Chapter 106. Psalm 106, verse number 2 says this, 
who can proclaim the mighty acts of the Lord or fully declare his praise. My brothers and my sisters, this morning, I would venture to say that it's a people that was not a people. I would venture to say that this morning, that it is people that were lost and bound, that people who are now grateful because of the redeeming power of Jesus Christ, that we are the ones that can get up, that we can tell our story, that we can let our lives shine before men and women, because there is a story to tell. There is your story. Who can proclaim the mighty acts of the Lord or fully declare his praise? Only those that have experienced it. Not because we were told about it. Not because we were, you know, somebody came and said something. No, but yes, it started like that. And that's a good thing. And then we came into the house of God ourselves. But now ourselves, we began to experience that same resurrecting power. And we began to experience that. It is us who can proclaim the mighty acts of the Lord. It is us who have lived it. It is us who have experienced it. We can fully declare his praise. We can tell our story. And this morning, I want us to let us know that there are lives that are depending on you to tell your story. There are lives that are depending on me to tell my story. And what story is that? The story of God's redeeming power upon your life. There are people that are never going to read the Bible. But they're going to read your life. And they're going to read my life. What story are we telling the people about the power of God? How are we proclaiming the mighty acts of the Lord and fully declaring his praise? Let your light shine. Tell your story. There are lives Eternity is in the balance. There are people that only you could identify with. There are troubles that only you have been through that could connect with the next person as you tell your story. We can tell them about how lost we were and how God found us. We could tell them about how so caught up in bondage we were and how God set us free. We could tell them about how sick we were and how God healed us. We could tell them about how at one point we were tossed to and from with the issues of life and the anxiety and the depression and all these other things and how we have just given it all to God and how God has set us free. We need to tell our story here this morning. If the worship team can begin to make their way up. The Bible says in the book of Revelation that salvation and power have come by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Stand with me here this morning. What does that mean? Salvation and power have come by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. There are some people that are going to come to Christ simply because you and I are telling them our story. That's all we need to do. Because our story is his story. It's a story of redemption.
He made a way where there was no way. It didn't matter how dry the wasteland was. He made streams of water burst up from within them. When the children of Israel were being pursued, Some of them even began to grumble. I would have probably done the same thing if I can be honest. But what they weren't expecting was that their their God part the Red Sea. I do know this much God is still writing your story he's not done yet right there where you're at. Begin to worship God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We worship you today, God. We thank you for your power. We thank you for who you are. Hallelujah. From all over this place, if this message ministered to you in any way, spoke to you. The altars are open. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Don't let our praise be empty space. Come or
empty space come abide in this place every heart every heart you are you are transforming come and move have your glory Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. We worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. Because he opened the prison doors. 